try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange, yeah. I'll be the best above all the rest, put me to the test, yeah. Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess, what's happening next, yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon, no coming in second This life is a lesson, he got a new engine from pain that's a blessing New focus So we're uh, creating a grizzly bear with a trout, or a, well, sorry, a salmon in its mouth. And this is very early stages. Oh, what's it doing now? Yes, it's very early stages of the piece. I've got this piece of paper under my hand to protect my transfer lines and all I'm doing at the moment is following the patterns of the fur and building a base coat because if you think of something like a grizzly bear he's got many layers on here of thick coat there's lots of detail <clears throat> up the top which is going to be really cool to add in it's like it's like got spikes of hair at the on the top level which are going to be awesome when we get that far i have a drinking problem need a hobby like you you yet the devil does make work for idle hands, buddy, and I know exactly where you're coming from. Um, if I didn't have art in my life, then my addictions uh, would come on a lot more heavily. Yeah, so yeah, you really do need a hobby, buddy. Definitely. And pyrography you can you can get yourself set up relatively cheaply you know you don't have to spend a fortune for i don't know if you, where you are based in the world but in the uk you can get like cheap starter units on amazon for like 30 40 quid that will get you up and running the these are uh, birch ply boards aren't expensive to buy you're talking for a 10 pack of like three millimeter for like 10 to 15 quid but i think a lot of us are really suffered didn't we through covid lockdown you know i mean i was very blessed to have you know art in my life that i could fall back on if i didn't have that art i would have self-destructed because i know exactly um what addictions are like I'm not ashamed to admit that I have addiction issues I work at battling them every day some days I lose most days I win just I've been suffering from COVID again this last three or four days and you know when you it just it's one of them ones that just makes you tired all the time and so my sleep pattern is completely cocked up
we're doing like a study group with uh, some pyrographers out of my Facebook group that I run and there's about five or six of us in this study group who we're all wood burning the same piece together and hopefully I'll be able to give them some tips and pointers with creating realism. Now you may think what's this guy doing is just dabbing away at this piece of wood and barely doing anything what I'm actually doing is I'm just creating a very light bass tone to the whole bear because like I said it's made up of many layers of fur isn't it so we have to try and build that bulk and volume of such a powerful animal plus it gives you great muscle memory uh, doing this as you find which way the hair is moving it helps you to build that muscle memory and that feeling so once you do get to the detail stage of things you've already got your directions of fur in there yours and for example here I've marked off round where the head should be now his body going back from that is obviously much darker but I'm just going to go near the edge now leave a gap between the head and the body because I can see some very light hairs off the edge of the head so I'm leaving that gap so I can capture those hairs like up here we know all this fur from this is all his, his body behind him we know it's all dark because it has to be darker set than the head for the head to be popped forward but we just need to be aware Of the things we can see on the image obviously you're never going to get every single piece of fur in exactly the same spot as the reference picture you know just don't worry about that you just it's just not going to happen this is your own piece you know you just take someone's template so it gives you the outline of a structure of a bear and then you fill it in with your own artistic vision Yeah, so I can guarantee you, uh, that's, I think there's about six of us in this study group that I'm, that I'm running. And I'll guarantee you all six will be different. I didn't really want to come on. Uh, thank you, Calvert. It's going to... This is early stages. I didn't really want to come on TikTok too early with this bear because obviously there's a lot of background work to do. 
and I know it can be pretty boring for the viewers to watch because they want something to be created in 20 minutes half an hour where unfortunately realism art takes a bit longer than that <laughs> I wish it took me a couple of hours to create realism art then I may be able to make a living at uh, my art if I could knock out a realism piece in a couple of hours <laughs> And part of the fun is as well is just enjoying what you're doing and learning from it, growing from it, you know. I'm by no means uh, like the finished article, you know, and there's a lot more learning for me to do yet and I think as all artists we are, we're always learning you know I think any artist that tells you oh yeah I know exactly what I'm doing all the time then I'd, I'd question that because there is always something new to learn. I can't re I can't wait to get into all the detail of the fur of this bear. It's a sort of art that I really love to do, where there's just so much opportunities for depth. But you've got to put in the background work to be able to get there, unfortunately. Very detailed though already, thank you. It's gonna be, it's going to be eventually, uh, excuse me. I'm just, you know, finding out which way all the fur is going. I've put a few marker points, I can sit, still see my graphite points of, you know, where the, uh, the, the top coat, it looks like loads of spikes of, uh, so I just want to keep them in, and then obviously we've got the fish in his mouth. I was just putting a, a video on for the group from a uh, a pyro uh, not a pyrographer an artist called Daryl Tank and for those of you who follow art or, or do art then I would advise you to listen to Daryl Tank and the Five Pencil Method. It it does transfer over to pyrography. A lot of what he talks about. You know, all about clean edges to value and depth. Perception. Tonal values. These are all things we need to learn on the journey. I mean, as we see down here, what we've got is his nose. Then, as he's gripping this fish, his cheek is sticking out as he's biting hold of it on this side because the light is coming in on that direction 
so we we see like you know his flappy cheek there and there is a very defined edge the nose I'm going to have to mess about with the image because I can not see the nostrils at all that bit is just completely black so I can't see a thing I don't know where the nostrils are I'm going to have to mess about with the image lighting it up a ton so I can see where the nostrils are and how big they are because I have no idea I've never done a bear before this is my first ever go at one but I know I, I did a hawk uh, a little was hello David I did the hawk a little while ago and uh, that had lots of detail to it and I didn't want to finish the piece I was really enjoying myself so much with it as you know pushing more and more into the feathers And this is the sort of art I like to do. You're very early, David. You were you're as bad as me. Do you suffer with insomnia? Or do you work nights? Right, you're on nights. Yeah, I haven't yet yeah, done any uh, live sessions of this bear yet. This is the first one because I was A, finding my feet, B, I've had COVID for the last uh, four or five days and I felt pretty crap. So I thought now we're just slowly starting to get into this bear. I would start doing some tick-tocking. Yeah, no, it's another strain again. My uh, sister-in-law had this one and they came round her. Uh, late last week and she said she was testing negative now on the lateral flows but then lateral flow tests they're just a waste of time and so I think she kindly passed the COVID on to me it's been a pretty bad one you know aching like mad and bloody not being able to sleep and then you know sleeping through the day which then cocks your nighttime sleep pattern up done it so i've been up since uh, i think it was about half two and it's just coming dawn now very early stages of a uh, daylight just about to come through yep 
You see, when you create in any animal, um, you know, whether it be a, a dog wood burning or anything, you must you need to add layering to build up the bulk and mass of what you're doing. You know, you can't go from say this bear for example we can't just put one level of burning down we can't say there we go there there's a piece of fur and just do that everywhere you know you need to add a base coat and find the shape you know as the edges Obviously it tails off, doesn't it, down the edge. So there's differences in tone. There's lighter areas where the sun's hitting his fur. This is right down the middle. Crease now of his head on this point. So I've got the camera skewed on it. I've got a few things on at the minute, so I can't give this my undivided attention. I've started drawing out the tiger. Cool, you having a go? Sadly, that was the winner on it on the uh, voting. David, I was hoping for wolves, but wolves are coming next month for sure. There's going to be no poll next month. Next month is wolves for you and me. Because I'd love to do a wolf and. I know you wanted to do a wolf, so that's next month. Yeah, don't worry, buddy. Next month it's wolves. I don't think I'm going to get to do a tiger this month. I don't think I'm going to have time. I think this bear's going to pretty much consume all of my time. I will do one at some point, a tiger, but it's like I've seen so many tiger wood burns that, you know, it's been done thousands of times, isn't it, the tiger? Good, good. That's that's the best way to do it, buddy. Pick the hardest one you can. And what I always say is, if you reach for the stars and you fall a little way short, you're still way up higher than what you would have been if you would have picked a really simple image. So that's good. Go with a hard one. And you will learn so much more from it. What I tend to try and do now is every picture I pick. I try and pick the hardest uh, subject matter. To try and learn more. So I look forward to seeing this tiger. 
I'm pretty sure you're going to smash it. Remember, you've got a whole month to do it. It doesn't. A lot of pyrographers in the group make the mistake. I'll put the themes up and they'll do it in a day or two. And it's like you've got a month to do it, you know. Take your time. There's a lady who I've not seen much of her in the group for a while, uh, Alison Waddington. My God, she was a fast burner, David. Blummy neck. Yeah, definitely go with a picture. Always go with like a real life animal rather than a graphic illustration. Yeah, this Alison Waddington. I put the uh, paragraph of the month theme up within about six hours done she was she was knocking them out i don't know don't know what it was she could churn out about like four or five in a day and they were pretty good level pieces and then she seemed to just disappear very strange I don't know if she got disheartened because even though she was a good pyrographer, she never won the pyrographer of the month. Well, I think she might have won it once. But by rushing, you could tell the difference between a rushed piece and a piece somebody had spent time on, you know. Can't even put any background music or anything on, unfortunately, I'm afraid, because I've got both device. well, I've got all three of my devices running. I'm doing it to help grow and get out of my comfort zone. That's what it's about, yeah. And if you follow each month's like theme, I promise you, uh, it will help you grow so much more as an artist. Yeah. You know, silhouettes when we first start we all did it when we first started doing silhouette wood burns they quickly get boring don't they once you've mastered uh, handling your pen then you want to you want to do something more realistic that's when the true magic of pyrography comes in then I'm just going to nip off and just make a brew because my mouth is really dry and it's dog's breakfast time. So I'll be back on in five minutes. I'm sorry, David, if you're on your break, I will catch you another time, buddy. I'm just going to feed the dogs, make a brew, and I'll be back up to continue with the bear. Okay, I'll see you shortly. How did you get out there? Come on.
Three dogs happily fed. I'll be back in a second. I've left no it. Stay, pet, stay. I'll be back in a second. Everybody, I'm back. Turn the burner back on and heat the pen back up. Actually, got a bit of daylight now, so I can see a little better. Don't know if anybody's been watching Wimbledon much this year it was going on about um like some of these like you know say women tennis players and stuff how they haven't been this is the first year in three years that they've been able to play properly 
and it makes you get to thinking again how much we all lost during that whatever it was pandemic you know people all these sports professional sports men and women all aged a couple of years lost a few years from their careers I mean don't get me wrong they're all wealthy anyway aren't they but imagine it was quite a hard time for them The women's champion uh, from 2019, this is the first time in three years she's been able to play since she won Wimbledon because we had two years of no Wimbledon and one year she was injured. I think she's in the semi-finals. I haven't watched much of it, don't get me wrong. I'm not a massive tennis fan. I used to be a massive sports lover. I used to love all sports. When COVID came along, I seemed to lose uh, all my passion for sports. It just went and I've never re-picked it back up really I used to watch all the big sporting events so here this is all this muzzle all going up and we know that the direction of the fur is all leading upwards so we can just flick light strokes in the upward manner And then you've got to remember your sides. That's a place where you've got to look for is your break point. As you step off down the side. Like on this side is a better example. I found a piece of fur here that was quite dark lined and so down here is still part of the muzzle so this is all the side bit so all the fur is moving in an opposite direction, it's moving down. So just follow your directions of the fur. The worst, there's a few worst bits about pyrography art. It's hello to a uh, Don John and hello Tanya. This is my first TikTok Tanya of it. I've had COVID.
Well, I still have got COVID, hello, hello. Hope your bear's coming along. Well, I've obviously, as you can see, got a long way to go. But I really want to make it really detailed, this fur. And there's so much detail we can add. It's going to be an amazing piece to work on. really try and immerse yourself into it and just go light at it and let yourself see points where you can add some interest and depth and there's lots of opportunities isn't there in this picture it's daunting as hell <laughs> I was just going to say before you said hello, uh, the worst stages of pyrography are transferring the image, as Tanya will attest to, and then when you first look at your transfer, you, you take your first look at your transfer and immediately the thoughts go through your head of oh my god <laughs> where the heck do I start usually you like to try and start on the eyes but the eyes are so small for such a massive animal I couldn't believe it I thought they'd have you know they'd have a bigger set of eyes than what they've got Mine are nowhere near finished the eyes yet. Because they're so small, I need some my smaller pens. I'm going to have to get my micro skew out to do the eyes properly. I switched over to the medium spear shader, Tanya, to like get a bit more heat and shading down into the wood and all I'm doing at the moment is just adding a very light like base layer of coat and building the muscle memory of the directions of the fur. Now here's one little area for you, Tanya, if you're still with me, where the better's head breaks, obviously, hopefully you've marked in the break point. Now when you come to do that body behind the head, don't instantly go right up to the edge because if you can see on the image there's some very light fur that is off on the edges of the bear's head you know where the sun's catching it so leave that just leave yourself a little gap just for now because you might just want to flick in some very light bits of fur on the bear's head just to finish it off because he, as you can see on the image it goes really dark really dark and then it's almost blonde at the ends where the sunlight is catching it and it's you know just the wispy bits at the end so leave yourself that little gap so you've got the opportunity to uh, capture that I have to be mindful of time as well here because I've got to try and download this maybe and put it on the YouTube channel because I don't think you can watch the live replays can you Tanya?
can you watch my live replays on TikTok? Is there an option for that or? Are the only I can see him in my creator portal. Not sure. No, you don't think so. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to download them and add them to YouTube. There's no Judy. Uh, said it was night time there where she was and she was going to bed so I'll have to keep mine for the time I'll do another half hour 20 minutes and then I'll break it so I can download it and edit the video It's daytime there, yeah, it's morning here, it's just, just dawn now. And so with this COVID, uh, it was making me like really tired during the day. Say, say come like 11 o'clock in the morning and stuff, I was just I was absolutely exhausted and stuff and just needs to go and lie down. And obviously fell asleep for a couple of hours. And then that screws your nighttime sleep pattern up, doesn't it? You know, if you sleep in the day. So with the amount of sleep I had yesterday, I've been up since half two. And I've got to go into the group as well shortly and do a little post explaining this month's new pyrographer of the month theme and close off last month's it's gonna be some I can see the odd amazing area where we can really get some super fine detailing around between the eyes where it gradually, you know, from the nose goes up. You can capture some really good detail. I can see a piece of fur there just in my mind's eye that I want to get around the back of so I don't want to go at it too heavily with this pen because it's a bit big I haven't worked out which pen is going to be the uh, optimal pen yet for this piece I tried the extra small spear shader I didn't feel like that was doing it so I switched over to this medium and I don't think that's going to do it either Okay, we'll try the coarse hair pen next or something and see how that one goes. I don't know how many pens uh, you've got, Tanya, but it's good to have a flick through them and see which one is going to be the best for the job. 
and for different, different parts of the job you will need different pens anyway very difficult to do a whole piece with just one pen saying that that old lady I did that was all done with a spoon shader You only have five tips, really. five's good enough. Of uh, uh, that uh, YouTube tutorial thing that I posted up in the group, that was for uh, from a lesson from Daryl Tank. And funnily enough, he calls it the five pencil method, where he only uses five pencils. And he is an amazing artist. So maybe you're at uh, the same, you're the five wood burning pen method. As time goes on, you'll, uh, you'll get more pens anyway. It'd be nice this Christmas, surely we've got enough members now in the group where we could get Uh, a Christmas sponsor from one of the pyrography manufacturers, wasn't it? I will reach out and ask. The only thing with a, uh, let's say, with the Optima is, I think, like, um, on some sort of blacklist a little bit. I don't think Pat would sponsor a Christmas special like Oak Crafts did. But I will ask. If you don't ask, you don't get, <laughs> do you? Is that break point where that cheek and nose change? But there's there's three break points here. There's the nose. There's the like cheek area as he clenched hold of the fish, and then there is the fur. Still going down the face behind the uh, cheek. So we've got to marry all three of them up. I've learnt my lesson a little bit from the horse that we did, Tanya, where I'd put in some super darks early, blocking in, and they really messed me up come the end. So I'm trying to learn my lesson and not go super dark anywhere like there because it can give you a problem later on in the piece. Blocking in usually is like when we've got, you know, you, there's just a black area and you would just, you know, you can just go black. down these legs but these legs we still need to try and add a little bit of detail don't we that's what you call blocking in and then with the 
outside of the trout tanya as well we're going to negative burn around the trout we're not going to burn an outline around the fish we're going to negative burn like say here under the cheek under the fish's mouth area is the the uh, bear's fur so instead of I mean this is this is just crude still at the minute instead of putting the shading line for the fish we're gonna put fur right up to the edge of it and negative burn it in that way the fish will pop out more because it's white and it that most of the fish So I'll talk to you some more about negative wood burning in the uh, future or you might already understand about negative wood burning, I don't know. Sketch with lead pencils and get good results. Where well, you want, yeah, you go through Dow Tanks catalog I listen to every all every tutorial he, he had on uh, YouTube when I was learning and I learned so much from listening to him he has like a few rules like where there is less light it must go darker if you can stick to that rule as well you can't go far wrong But with negative wood burning you would burn around the item let's say like for example a leaf is a great example of negative wood burning you can really make a leaf look like it pops I know it'll look a bit weird to start with this fish with a negative burn just around it doesn't make much sense but it will there is some tiny bits of shading This pen's a bit hot really to be doing inside the mouth. So I'm just gonna just flick over it very lightly. To capture the inside of that fish's mouth. There is some coloration there, isn't there? Can you hear the snoring pep in the background? A little short air chihuahua who can snore for England. I'll show him you quickly before I end this session because it's going to get too long otherwise. 
So I'm going to end the session here, go back to time lapsing. And come back on TikTok a bit later. So there's where we are with a the bear. There's my reference picture. There's what so I can see what you all say to me. And there are the three chihuahuas. The brown one at the back is Mr. Snorer, Pep. <laughs> so they sleep in here while I do my art and stuff. So I shall leave the session there for now. I wish I could just keep going, but I need to stop it so I can break them down for Tanya. We'll, we'll tell you what I'll do. I'll end this live and then I'll come back live again. So I've got a break point so I can download them easier and put them on YouTube. So I'll see you in two minutes. Okay. Lane fan.